Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the first Autism Advice Line live event um, here at Scottish Autism. My name is Joanna Panese. I'm the Practice Development Manager for Scottish Autism, and part of my job is to manage our autism support team who uh, facilitate our Autism Advice Line. Uh, here at Scottish Autism, we understand that this is a really challenging time for autistic people, their friends, families, carers. The coronavirus outbreak is changing life for all of us, um, and this is a really challenging and stressful time. Our autism support team are here to provide emotional and practical support at this time. And alongside our digital resources, the autism support team can advise on issues around education, maintaining a routine, managing stress, sleep, and most importantly, keeping well uh, right now. So thank you so much to everybody who submitted questions uh, to our team. We'll try and answer as many of those questions as we can tonight. However, everybody that submitted a question will receive a response from an autism advisor in the coming days. So the first question that we had submitted is from um, a parent of a young autistic child and so they're experiencing real difficulty um, at bedtime with their son. Unfortunately, they've had to resort to having their son sleeping in their bed and they're asking, is there anything that we can do to make bedtime easier? Before COVID-19, he settled very easily. He's four years old and was recently diagnosed in, in February. I can understand at this time, this is such a challenging time to keep um, a sense of routine going. But first and foremost, um, the advice I would be to, to give to you is to be kind to yourselves. Everybody is going through a really, really stressful time at the moment. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's important that families um, just, you know, are able to kind of take a break uh, and, to, and to be kind um, to each other during this time. So advice around sleep can vary depending on whether it's a child or an adolescent or an adult. So if you're experiencing um, uh, difficulties or issues around sleep um, with adolescents or adults, then please do contact our um, autism uh, advisors and they will be able to give you more specific support than this that might be more around a young child um, such as the, uh, this uh, young lad. So the first thing that you can do in this sort of circumstances is have a look at the kind of routine around going to bed. Um, you know, what does that look like? Um, is it possible to kind of structure that routine a wee bit more? Um, you know, as we're building up to bedtime, that might be going, you know, for a nice warm bath um, or shower or snuggling down to read a favourite story or complete a favourite task, something nice and quiet maybe a jigsaw as well, they're very good as well, very relaxing and, and nice quiet activities that you can do that just sort of uh, signals that it's time to settle down, it's time to, to, to get ready um, for bed um, and try and do these things, you know, in the child's bedroom so they're familiar with that environment um, and that's a comfortable and safe place for them. It might be as well that he's experiencing quite, you know, a level of anxiety in relation to what's going on. Um, you know, maybe he's worried for himself that maybe he might become poorly or that mum or dad or any other um, member of the family might become poorly as well. What might that mean? Um, you know, our children are listening to a lot of things that are going on um, through the news and things like that. So it could be a possibility that he's experiencing quite a level of anxiety around that. Um, so it might be um, you know, worth seeing whether or not you can um, talk to your child about what's happening and that will differ depending on how old your child is and, and what's their preferred communication style with that. Um, but just spending a few minutes just reflecting on the day um, you know, what were the positives of that day and just, you know, making uh, things nice and positive and nice and light. Um, but to say, just, you know, recognising as well that you know, this is a huge change that's happened in, in our children's lives. So he may, you know, just want to be closer to you uh, and, and physically feel feel your presence. Um, and that might be, um, you know, what's kind of happening here. And as well, I'm sure, you know, routines of, of family members of, at home have changed as well. You know, maybe mom and dad going out to work and now they're at home as well. So everything's sort of a bit different and, and that causes anxiety as well. So trying to kind of plan out what the day is going to look like um, and uh, you know 
what are what are your plans for the day um, and what are your expectations of him and what is his expectations of you as well um, and 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 look at you know uh, explaining um, what's going to happen in the day uh, to your child so they just get a bit more familiar to that that change of routine uh, that might help uh, help with him is it also possible that um, you know maybe you can uh, try some more physical activity um, you know maybe later on in the afternoon you know if you have a garden you're able to get out into the garden and um, have a run around or can you take you know um, a walk around your neighborhood um, in that afternoon kind of late afternoon period which just starts it helps to expand expend some of that energy as well you know if a uh, little one's been in the house all day as well um, you know it might be likely that he's you know got energy to expand and and, uh, and needs to get rid of that so you know maybe a little bit of light exercise late afternoon um, and then just start the bedtime routine from that point onwards might just help um, help uh, sort of settle back into that routine but most importantly during this time it is about looking after one another and it's about you know being kind to yourself um, you know, if your little boy is in bed with you, then, you know, this is you've not nothing's gone wrong. And um, it's just that's that's what he needs at that time. But obviously, it's really important that you look after yourself in this too as well. So we do have resources around, um, you know, managing uh, your uh, well-being. And, um, you know, if you've got a, a child at home as well, and you'll find those on our on our website if the, um, uh, if you want to go and visit there. Hopefully that's answered uh, your question. So thank you for that. The next question that we've had in is from an autistic uh, gentleman and he has kind of pointed out actually um, and we've, we've heard this from from a lot of um, uh, the autistic community is actually the advice around um, uh, exercise and things like that is quite vague and quite open to, to interpretation um, and he's referenced the um, as I am's clarification around outdoor exercise of being no more than about 40 minutes um, which you know is much clearer than maybe once a day um, and you know for for a lot of people actually um, you know do, do need more clarity around what that actually means um, now the UK government did uh, publish some new uh, guidance on this on the 29th of March which stated that a walk um, of up to an hour or a cycle or a run of up to 30 minutes was seen as a reasonable um, amount of exercise. But please remember, you know, this is once a day um, and uh, within your local in, local area, you know, please do not get in your car and drive uh, to a place. There was some clarification around um, individuals whose care plans state that they do require um, more outside space um, and they are able to do that um, but it must be very clearly sp uh, stated in that individual's care plan and um, that it's that they need to to take um, outside exercise more than once a day uh, but there was new uh, new guidance that was released about that very very recently you know these guidance uh, are, are in place to prevent the spread of infection and to protect those um, those uh, communities around us and, and obviously protect our NHS so do be mindful if you are going out um, you know wash your hands um, when you come back in uh, to your house and, and, and stay in your local area uh, where you're going um, and only exercise with members of your household or your carer or, or person that's coming in to support you, and um, that's fine as well. Um, you, you know, you can go out with your carer, even if they do not live in your household, and um, they have clarified the guidance on that too. The second part uh, of this gentleman's question uh, was around about the, the symptoms advice. Um, and he said he found it very hard to, to uh, interpret for someone who, like him, tends to uh, go for quite some time before recognising um, that there's something wrong potentially. Um, and this is a, you know, a common um, issue that, uh, that many people uh, have, is that recognising um, when something's different. Um, so what might be, uh, what you could maybe do in this circumstance is to uh, to write down or to record, you know, what does well feel like for you um, on a normal day to day basis? Um, and then that might help you recognise when things are not um, not the same as they as they usually are. Um, 
uh, and then help recognise um, that you know that, that you might have symptoms of, of something or, or a change somewhere. The guidance obviously is or the symptoms of uh, coronavirus are a high fever um, of 37.8 and greater um, and a new and continuous cough. So it might be worth, um, if you can, uh, getting hold of a, a thermometer or if you have a thermometer in your home, that you can check your temperature um, and that will tell you whether or not you're experiencing a, a, a fever or whether or not you're just hot, um, you know, for, for, for other reasons. Um, so it can be worth having having one of those in your home if you if you can get hold of one or ask somebody uh, to, to bring one for you. But as I say, a new continuous cough or a high fever or a high temperature. Now, a new continuous cough, um, we've had some people inquiring, saying that that's quite a confusing uh, statement in itself. So um, the, the, the uh, NHS Inform have produced some guidance to say what a continuous cough is. So that is a new cough that lasts longer than an hour and you have three or more episodes of coughing in a 24 hour period. That would what would be termed as a continuous cough. I hope that's helpful. Next question we've had here is around benefits. Um, and the, the inquirer has asked that they are completing a PIP form. So that is for the personal independence payment um, for their daughter who will be 16 at the end of this month. Uh, she's currently on the disability living allowance um, and she has a learning disability, epilepsy and autism. So in uh, usual circumstances, uh, there are lots of places where you can go to get face to face support uh, to fill in forms such as this. Uh, your local citizens advice bureau, they will uh, uh, offer you an appointment uh, to bring your form in and, and work through it with them as do your local carer centre. However, obviously right now they're not able to do those face to face um, uh, in uh, appointments. However, Citizens Advice have published lots and lots of support and information on their website um, and again specifically for uh, the PIP claims as well. They have a, a designated space on their website and they are providing telephone appointments as well um, to talk you through um, what's required in each section. And likewise with the local carer centre. You can find details of your local carer centre um, at the Care uh, Info Scotland website and they have a list of all the carer centres um, in Scotland and, and we'll include um, links to this in the kind of resources that will come out um, next week with, with, this, uh, with this session. Um, you mentioned in your question there that your daughter has epilepsy. Um, epilepsy Scotland also have welfare rights officers um, that are able to help um, help and guide you with um, with uh, benefits forms. However, we have been informed just recently that there is a waiting list for support from them. However, they're making every effort to try and work through that as quickly as possible. But obviously, um, you know, recently there's been a, a, an increase in the amount of claims. So they, they do have a waiting list, however, uh, but they are able to um, offer you that support. Um, again, it will be over telephone. The DWP also have advisors um, that would normally uh, be able to support with this. Now, as you can probably understand, the DWP is experiencing a, a high level of inquiries and calls at the moment um, for, for benefits payments. So um, your first port of call probably be your citizens advice and your local care centre. OK, the next question we've received here is um, from a lady who um, is inquiring about uh, when her son would return to school. So she's looking to find out what support's available to her son uh, when he returns to school after being off for an extended period of time. Um, and, you know, this is a, a common um, question that we're asked, you know, um, what, what uh, support will be put in place to support uh, children back into that school environment when they've been off for what probably will be an ex uh, a quite a significant period of time. Now for some children with autism, uh, not being in school, not going into that social situation, um, uh, not um, you know, being in that in that environment will actually suit them really, really well. You know, being out being a little bit more relaxed at home, being able to access things on their own terms um, in a very, very familiar environment. 
will be will be uh, really beneficial for them. However, there will be other children who not having that that uh, routine and not having that uh, sense of um, being able to go out to school uh, can be quite difficult for them. So we've got lots and lots of resources on our website about supporting home learning, about supporting um, your child and yourself um, in that in that uh, situation, you know, when you're both at home. But with regards to planning for going back to school when the schools redo open, um, then all schools will be asked to look at plan, you know, planning for that um, when it comes the time to reopen. So our advice would be to contact um, your school class teacher if you're able to, or um, the support for learning team that have been around that that child um, when the time comes to you know look at what plans might we put in place and um, you know whether that be refamiliarization you know being able to uh, refamiliarize yourself with the environment and um, looking at more routines um, and just building in uh, that very slowly into that child's routine that they will be returning to school at this point but as I say I would wait until we have a date for when the schools are going to reopen before maybe um, you know starting that process um, and things like uh, calendars to help sort of mark the time off and give that concrete understanding of the of the passage of time can be hugely useful to explain this there might also be some worries and anxiety about returning to school um, and what might that be like um, and, and what what will the situation be so worry boxes where you can just jot down what your worries are and, and pop them in there and, and bring them out to have a, a, a you know, brief conversation with uh, might be useful. Uh, social stories or visual supports that explain uh, what's going on can also be useful in this time. Now, we aim to uh, ensure that those are bespoke and specific to, uh, to individual children or people. So if anybody would like more support in producing social stories or visual supports for their child, then please do um, uh, email in to us and one of the advisors will get back to you and, and we'll be able to offer much more individualised support around designing those, those types of things because it's important to get that right for that child. And as I say, there's lots of resources on our website that might be useful too. We've had a, an inquiry here um, from um, a lady who visits her autistic nephew who lives about six miles away um, and out with the normal situation. She would probably visit two to three times a week um, as a well-being check as he lives alone to provide shopping and to prepare meals um, and, and, and be that listening and supporting ear for him. So we um, had a look um, around the guidelines around this and NHS Inform came back and said that families and carers who are providing essential care can continue to visit um, the, the individuals that they're helping. Um, so you, you can still continue to visit your nephew if you're providing him with essential care. Um, so providing shopping, medication, um, then, then yes, you can still continue uh, continue to do that. But also, it might be worth um, you know talking through with your nephew, um, you know what would be the contingency if you weren't able to uh, visit. Um, is there other things that that you can do remotely, like digitally staying in touch? Lots of great apps around now, um, or you know, FaceTime or just just a phone call, um, you know, kind of keeping in touch, that kind of well-being. Um, are you able to batch cook meals um, that he can prepare himself uh, that might reduce the amount of visits that you're having to make? Um, these are all things that that you can chat through with him about. Um, you know, and, and find what suits him. But as I say, the NHS informed guidance is that families and carers providing essential care can continue to do this. OK, our next question here. Um, can I accompany my autistic child into hospital if he's admitted? Um, and I would imagine this is probably a source of great worry to a lot of people who um, were worried about if their autistic child or, or family member were to be admitted to hospital for whatever reason, would somebody be able to be them there to support them? The uh, 
The Scottish Government um, have just recently updated the guidance around this, so we can share that with you uh, tonight. Um, so obviously they're wanting to risk, uh, reduce the risk of spreading uh, coronavirus um, and obviously shield vulnerable groups. So NHS boards are being asked to restrict the amount of hospital visiting that is taking that uh, place to essential visits only. But they have clarified that if you are visiting um, hospital to support somebody with a mental health issue such as dementia, a learning disability or autism where be not being present would cause the patient di patient distress, then you can continue to to visit them. So if in, in the case of this question, if your autistic child is admitted to hospital, yes, you will be able to go with him in line with this guidance here. But obviously any visitor to hospital should consider if their visit is essential in these cases. But just to, to, to rephrase that, anybody with a mental health condition such as uh, dementia or a learning disability or autism can have somebody with them if they need that person. And um, if not, not having that person would cause them significant distress. OK. OK, so the next question we have here is many autistic people experience anxiety and worry about communicating via phone. Uh, will there be scope for other forms of communication to be used? Um, I think this question was submitted in relation to uh, GP appointments and some other medical appointments being moved from face to face appointments onto uh, onto telephone only appointments. Um, so obviously primary, primary care providers are following uh, Health Protection Scotland guidelines, which mean that they've been asked to, um, you know, really significantly reduce the amount of face to face contact they're having um, and they're only seeing uh, patients for essential um, uh, appointments only. Some GP practices are able to offer video consultations, um, not all, but some um, uh, individuals would need to highlight their needs to their GP practice um, themselves. Um, now you can ask an advocate or a friend uh, to support you to explain this to your GP, um, or you can email your GP and explain to them how you would prefer to communicate with them. Is there another way of doing it? Um, and um, you know, and, and explore those options with that GP. As I say, some GPs are able to offer video consultations, um, but not all. So it's best to check with your local GP practice to find out um, how they're how they're approaching it. Um, but as I say, um, the best thing to do is contact your your specific GP um, about that. OK, so those were the questions uh, that we had submitted um, to our um, to our event this evening, um, and I hope uh, they've been helpful uh, to to people listening tonight. Um, we have a number of resources that are available on our website, um, and you'll see the the email address there. Um, and and don't worry if you don't catch them today. We will you know publish all of this um, uh, uh, in the coming days and early next week, um, so you'll be able to 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 click on the links. Um, so there are, is information on coronavirus on our website. We also have our advice line and you can email on uh, into our advice line um, or use our online contact form, which is on our website and an autism advisor will be in touch um, you know, as soon as we possibly can. Um, usually within a, a couple of days, we'll get back to you unless um, your inquiry um, is urgent. And then if you mark on it that it is urgent, we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can on that. We also have a number of other resources. Um, we have our right click program. Uh, we have programs for young child, for teen and for adult. And this is for parents and carers. Um, and that's again available on our website. Um, and you can or you can just uh, type in right click um, and it will lead you straight there. And you can register for the program. There's lots and lots of online learning on there, but how to support um, your in, uh, individual or young person. We also have our right click programme for women and girls um, and again that's on our website. You can register for that um, and that was um, you know, produced in collaboration with uh, the Scottish Women's Autism Network um, and there's lots and lots of useful resources uh, that, that they've uh, uh, shared with us on our website as well. 
We'd also as well advise you to con uh, to uh, have a look at Scottish Government's website for the very latest and up to date advice with regards to coronavirus and changes to, to social life and uh, to um, schools and things like that. They'll uh, keep feeding that information through there. We regularly check that as well to make sure that we're up to date. NHS Inform are also a really good place um, to find out information as well. Um, you know, and again, this we check them daily uh, to make sure that we're up to date as well. But uh, as I say, Scottish Government and NHS Inform are really good sources of information um, that are really up to date. So thank you for joining us um, on our first uh, Autism Advice Line live event. Uh, there will be a recording of the Advice Line live and a transcript of the questions and answers available post event. She do require to, re uh, to refer back to any information that you've heard or seen tonight. Um, and the link that you use to access the live event is the same link to, uh, to view the recording. Uh, the question and answer transcript will be available on our website post event under the COVID-19 information resource section. So thank you again and please follow us. We're on Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube and Instagram and we're regularly posting uh, uh, news, information and resources um, across our social media platforms. So, uh, you know, do keep in touch with us there. You can sign up for our e-newsletter um, and you can also support our Autism Advice Line uh, via the, the link below. So again, thank you so much for joining us um, and I hope you found the event useful.